This giant behemoth you're seeing is one of the biggest icebreakers in the world. 50 years of victory, named after the Allies' victory over Nazi Germany in World War II. It's powered by two nuclear reactors that generate up to 75,000 horsepower. The ship elegantly crushes over several feet of ice on its route to the top of the world. The ice in central parts of the Arctic Ocean is on average 8.2 feet thick. If you happen to be on board this engineering marvel, you can literally feel the vibration from your cabin as the ice gets crushed by the vessel. 50 years of victory is capable of crushing 10 feet or 3 meters thick ice in the Arctic region. The feeling of the giant slabs of ice colliding with the ship's hull is truly an unforgettable experience. While navigating through thick ice, it maintains a speed of 12 knots or 14 miles an hour. In clear water, 50 years of victory reaches a speed of 18 knots or 21 miles an hour. Construction of this ship started in 1989 and it was initially named Ural. In 2007, it made its maiden voyage to Murmansk, a northwest port city in Russia. Its maiden voyage got delayed for two reasons. After the breakup of the Soviet Union, the Russian economy was in despair. This meant that there weren't enough funds to continue construction. The ship was initially planned to be unveiled on the 50th anniversary of Victory Day in 1995. Instead, it was found in an abandoned state on this joyous occasion. Work restarted in 2003 but had to be halted because of a fire incident. All workers aboard the vessel had to be evacuated while the fire crews battled the fire for some 20 hours before getting it under control. One worker was sent to the hospital. After all this tiring hassle, the icebreaker was finally completed in the beginning of 2007 after the 60th anniversary of Victory Day. Its sea trials were conducted on the icy Gulf of Finland to test its efficiency. As of 2023, Russia is the only country that builds and operates nuclear-powered icebreakers, having built a number of such vessels to aid in shipping along the northern sea route and Russian Arctic outposts since the Soviet era. If you've enjoyed this video so far, hit the subscribe button to show your support. We release two videos each week, bringing you the hottest news in the architectural world. Spanning up to a length of 524 feet and a width of 98 feet, the vessel weighs about 25,840 metric tons. Even though it wasn't constructed for tourist purposes, the vessel's free during the summer months. That's why a couple of companies like Quark Expedition have been offering trips to the North Pole since 2008. Each participant pays up to US $45,000 for a cruise lasting two weeks. Given the huge scale of the vessel, it's almost like a mini town with all the amenities under one roof. There's a dining room, aft saloon for lectures, a bar and lounge with a front view, a library full of polar books, and even a saltwater pool. Guests can also visit the nuclear reactors that are visible inside the engine room. To see both these twin reactors in action powering this massive creature must be quite an experience. The ship's journey starts from Murmansk, the largest city on the Arctic Circle. This is the place where all the heavy icebreakers rest during summer. As the crew greets the guests boarding the ship, workers start preparing the release of the vessel into sea. The first stop of the journey is Franz Josef Land, 746 miles away. It's an archipelago consisting of 190 islands located north of Russia in the Arctic Ocean. There's no indigenous population and the only human inhabitants are Russian military personnel and scientists. One of the highlights of this trip is the helicopter ride. The ship has a helipad on which rests an Mi-8 helicopter. If the weather's suitable, the helicopter will take you on top of the Franz Josef Land 1,200 feet above sea level. Here above the Table Mountains, tourists can catch a bird's eye view of the sea stretching miles and miles across. The next stop, Cape Tedegoff, offers abundant sightseeing with its natural beauty and unique rock formations. Despite the climate of the area, there's plenty of floral to be found. When on board the ship, tourists can use the fixed binoculars on the ship to see the large glaciers. If you're lucky enough, they can catch the sight of a polar bear. You can find them roaming around on the ice slabs, hoping to catch an unfortunate seal for its lunch. These species, which calls the Arctic its home, is at the risk of being in danger due to a loss of its habitat owing to climate change. Upon touching the North Pole, a customary champagne toast and barbecue parties helped to mark the completion of the journey. 50 Years of Victory was an experimental project. For the first time in Russian history, a spoon-shaped bow is incorporated into ice-breaking ships. As predicted by the ship's designers, such a shape increases the efficiency of the ship's effort in breaking the ice. The icebreaker is equipped with an all-new digital automated control system. The very first icebreaker was the Soviet vessel named Lenin, launched in 1957. 
it was the world's first nuclear-powered surface vessel and the first civilian-operated nuclear vessel. Lenin began ice-breaking service along the northern sea route in 1959 and continued to do so until 1989. The second-generation nuclear-powered icebreaker was the Arctica class. 50 Years of Victory is part of the second-generation icebreakers. With a modified reactor design, the Arctica delivered better ice-crushing performance than its predecessors. Yamal is another example of this type. It's a big shark tattoo on the hull, giving the illusion that this monster is eating the ice. Commissioned in the early 1990s, Yamal's job was to keep the shipping lanes open and also carry passengers on Arctic excursions. In July 1994, Yamal took an excursion to the North Pole with the National Science Foundation to mark its maiden voyage. Because of the ship's 90-90 coordinates, the ship's captain organized a swim party in the freezing water. In 2007, the famous endurance swimmer Lewis Gordon Pugh sailed to the North Pole via Yamal. He made history by being the first person to swim a kilometer at the North Pole. Dubbed the Sir Edmund Hillary of swimming, he was the first person to complete a long-distance swim in every ocean in the world. Yamal is equipped with a double hull. Its outer hull is nearly two inches thick to combat the ice, while it's one inch thick elsewhere. One of the interesting things about icebreaker vessels is that they can't swim in tropical oceans. They needed a freezing environment to cool their nuclear reactors. Like most icebreakers, Yamal carries one helicopter and several Zodiac boats. Radio and satellite communication systems are also installed, which can provide navigation, telephone, fax, and email services. Icebreakers have also been used for several scientific expeditions in the Arctic or towing smaller ships. Russia has been constantly working to upgrade its existing icebreakers. After the end of World War II, the Soviet Union launched an ambitious plan to utilize the ice-covered northern sea route as a trade path. This plan included replacing the obsolete steam-powered icebreakers with more powerful diesel-electric vessels and culminated with the construction of the first nuclear-powered icebreaker in the late 1950s. Currently, the Suez Canal handles most of the sea trade in the world. Russia hopes to transform the northern sea route into a mini Suez Canal with year-round shipping. The northern sea route runs from Murmansk to the Bering Strait near Alaska. Under Project 22220, Russia launched an even more powerful icebreaker called the Arctica. Launched in 2016, it's the largest and most powerful icebreaker ever constructed. The new icebreaker features a dual functionality that allows it to operate in shallow coastal areas. These shallow waters provide bulk carriers, tankers, and liquefied natural gas carriers access to ports servicing natural resource development projects. With a total propulsion of 80,000 horsepower, Arctic is capable of breaking 9 feet thick level ice at a continuous speed of 1.5 to 2 knots. It has an RITM-200 light water reactor that produces pressurized water and steam. The steam runs the turbine, which generates electricity. The electricity is used to drive the three shafts and four-bladed propellers of the ship. According to President Vladimir Putin, Russia's Arctic fleet would operate at least 13 heavy-duty icebreakers, the majority of which would be powered by nuclear reactors. These state-owned vessels are designed primarily for commercial ship escort and ice operations. However, that doesn't mean they can't be repurposed. They can be used to escort naval vessels to support national security interests. It can also conduct scientific voyages, but it's doubtful whether they'll take tourists on voyages to the North Pole, as previous Russian icebreakers have done since 1991. At the moment, three more ships, namely Ural, Yakutia, and Chukota, are being made ready to replace the previous icebreakers in service for decades. For years, Russia has enjoyed zero competition in the icebreaker industry. As of 2019, China also expressed its interest in building a nuclear-powered icebreaker similar to that of Russia. Even though there's no progress on their part, it's only a matter of time before China will enter the market as well. Developing the Northern Sea Route is in the interest of both nations as they'll have a less time-consuming and sanction-proof pathway for doing trade. If you liked today's video, show your support by hitting the like button and subscribing to our channel. We are committed to releasing two weekly videos, so stay tuned for our next upload.